Today we're gonna be looking at the home colorway of the Nike Air Penny 1. There's so much nostalgia behind this sneaker and I'm excited to give you guys a review of this shoe as well. And if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is The DNA Show. Hey! On this channel, I love talking about sneakers and especially giving you guys dope reviews like this. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing and joining the fam. We're on the road to a million subscribers and you could be the next one to get us there. Now let's go ahead and crack this box open and see what they are talking about. Starting with the outside of the box right here, we got nothing special, just your classic Nike box. All red with the Nike branding on the top and the sides with the swoosh. And then on the size tag, it reads Nike Air Penny, white, varsity, royal, black, size 13, just for me. Retails 170 bucks. Now flipping open the lid right here, you got your classic white paper, and then you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. All right, first impression of this sneaker. Oh. <sighs> Might I say perfection. I don't normally do all white sneakers cause I'm a size 13 and they just look extremely huge. But these ones, I had to make an exception. These go crazy. So before we start breaking down the styles, cuts and materials and all the details of this shoe, we gotta talk about the history first. Penny Hardaway was an iconic basketball player known heavily for playing in the NBA during the 90s. And back in 1995, 96 season, we saw this sneaker debut with the Penny One. And I'm telling you right now, still in current time, this is a legendary sneaker. Even though Penny Hardaway may have been overshadowed by Michael Jordan during that same time with him winning all those championships, I can guarantee you Penny Hardaway was a legendary basketball player and has played a huge role in the sneaker community and our culture at the same time. We haven't seen this colorway hit the streets since 1996. So I think from a sneakerhead perspective, we could say these were definitely overdue. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and break down this sneaker, starting from the bottom and working our way up. Looking at the outsole right here, you got an all white outsole with a huge Nike swoosh right here in blue with that wavy traction vibe on the bottom of the foot. And then one thing that I had always loved, I remember this when I was a little kid, super dope. You've kind of got this see-through element right here in the center of the heel, and this actually looks at the air unit right here. So super dope to be able to see that and see that they brought that steel back to life in current time because I remember back in my childhood days looking at this type of element or like the hologram on the Jordan 13s, different stuff like that was a super iconic to me growing up. So it's always nice seeing this little touch as well. Now going up to the midsole right here, you got your foam wrapping up halfway through the middle of the foot with your jeweled Nike swoosh and the black lines through it. And then on the back end, you got your exposed air unit like I was talking about earlier. And then on here, it looks like it has a blue line on the inside of that as well. Now going up to the upper, you have a smooth leather. It doesn't feel like it's the best. It doesn't feel like it's the worst. At the end of the day, I don't think they were coming for crazy quality. I think it was just more of like bringing back nostalgia. So I can understand why they didn't put some crazy premium leather unless it were to be like a collab like we've recently seen. Now looking at the toe of the foot right here, you got your piping that goes around both sides from the center of the foot. And then you got your blue jewel right here with the white Nike swoosh. And then one of my favorite elements, that Orlando Magic pinstripe black with the white pinstripes going up this nylon tongue right here super dope super soft right here these come equipped with a pair of rope white laces and then on the top of the tongue you have a leather patch with the embroidered blue swoosh with the silver lining around that and then a black and blue pull tab on the front end and on the back end of the shoe now going to the heel of the foot you have a very iconic hit right here and it's the penny one cent logo honestly this logo is always super dope and it's easy to identify as soon as you see a penny hardaway sneaker typically you're gonna look for this and you'll be like oh okay that's a pair of pins I know these might look like some moon boots from the 90s, but at the end of the day, these are definitely very iconic and nostalgic. And it's dope to see them coming back to life, like I said earlier, 20 plus years later. So for all my new sneaker heads out there, trust me, these hit home for a lot of the OGs out there. Now going to the sock liner right here, you got a blue material and then a black behind the tongue. And then on the insole, you got a royal blue with a white Nike Air on the center of that. So as you guys can tell, I clearly love this sneaker and I'm so excited to be able to add these to my collection. Now I'm interested to see what everybody else thinks because because I know there's gonna be a big disconnect between the modern day sneakerhead, all the OG heads, the nostalgia, the gap between. This was 1996. If you're a sneakerhead and you're under 21 years old, no disrespect, but you weren't even born at that time, which means you may not know or understand the nostalgia behind it, which could cause you not to like it because you don't have any sentimental memories to it. Completely understand. So that's why I'm always interested to see the polls on sneakers like this that aren't as hot, that aren't trending as much. And I'm sure it might not be what we expect to see. So anyways, at the end of the day, if you haven't followed me on IG, make sure you do so you can participate in the polls and see all the results here on the channel. I asked the people the simple question, is this shoe fire or is this shoe trash? This is what they said. 38% of the people said fire and 62% of the people said trash. Now, I didn't think it was gonna be that bad. I was thinking like, you know, like a 60-40 saying fire, but 
Maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. Like, let me know what y'all think down below. Again, we can all like what we want to like, and there's no harm or no love lost to anybody. Like, I'm happy to see everybody's opinions, but I thought that was kind of crazy. And I understand there haven't been a bunch of penny ones coming out to raise awareness behind the sneaker to cause the the consumer to understand the nostalgia behind it and the storytelling and all that different stuff. So I get that as well. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section when it comes to the sneaker. Uh, is this your first time hearing about the shoe? Do you now like it? Do you still not like it? Let me know. I, I would love to hear all of your opinions. Again, I didn't design it. I didn't create the nostalgia. I'm just telling you guys, you know, my stories and my memories of the shoe. At the end of the day, I love these. I think they're fire. I'm glad to have them in my collection. And for you to be able to purchase these for retail, I think that's a good thing too. When it, and it's kind of interesting because I looked at the resale market. I was able to get these at my local store for 170 bucks and people are already selling them for like 225 in the black pair. The black pair is going for like 350 or 400 bucks or something like that. Those sold out, so everybody wanted those. At least I think everybody did. I don't know. Either way, let me know you guys' opinion. I would love to hear it down below in the comment section. Yo, if you enjoyed this video and want to grow your collection or make extra money on the side, I built a VIP mastermind that will teach you everything that I've learned about growing my sneaker collection over the past 15 years. This will also give you access to the DNA fam in my VIP community where we talk about investing outside of sneakers. And don't worry. If you don't plan on joining the VIP community, it's okay. I also set up a private DNA fam community that gives you access to all the behind the scenes looks from the studio and multiple chances to win free sneakers and gear from weekly and monthly challenges. So all you need to do is click on the link down below in the description or the first link pinned in the comment section. That will get you set up and into the community. I'm excited to see you guys on the inside. I hope to see you guys in another video. All right, y'all, I'm out.